Hello, this is Dale. In this video, I'm going to discuss how I execute a credit spread trade. I'm going through it for you step by step. First of all, I use three indicators to determine when I want to put on either a bull put or a bear call. These are major moves, the Fibonacci extensions off the major moves, and the regression channel. Measured move is, a bullish measured move is it goes from a low to a high, and then uh, when it has a pullback, but makes a higher low and then a higher high, this is a classic definition of an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. As long as you continue to have major moves to the upside, this is in a bullish trend. Just the opposite is true. If you have a, a, a lower high and then a lower low and it continues to do that, you are in a downtrend. This is an interesting concept because once you see a major move, you can go up ahead and put on a Fibonacci extension, which will help you to determine when the trade might be overextended and might be a good time to look at taking profits. The Fibonacci's were um, derived from the number sequence that Fibonacci came up with. And that's uh, uh, if you take the, any two numbers and you add those, it gives you the next number in line. Three plus five is eight. Five plus eight is 13 and so forth. If you take the last number divided by the preceding number, you always get the root Fibonacci ratio. Then mathematicians went ahead and used the square and the square root and, and came up with reciprocals. And this is what I use for the extensions to tell me when the move might be overextended. Now, the beautiful thing about the Fibonacci's is they're found throughout nature. Um, your human bones grow to the ratio, um, and, and, and plants, uh, the leaves grow at a proportion to the Fibonacci ratio. So doesn't it make sense that the, the market would be in, in, in close harmony with nature and, and fear and greed? The last tool I use is the regression channel. Um, if you look at the regression line, it's calculated by 50% of the price above, 50% of the price below. It's a great trend line. But then when you do plus or minus one and plus or minus two standard deviations, plus or minus two and plus or, mi plus or minus two gives you 95% of all prices will be contained within that channel. It's a nice look, forward look at where the market is and where it might be going. A lot of times when it's oversold, I'm looking for it to revert back to the mean. When it's overbought, I'm looking for it to revert back to the mean with a bearish trade. Now, there's many advantages to vertical credit spreads, and this is what I focus on. Uh, they give you great returns with high probable uh, results. Uh, the yield monthly income on a consistent basis. I'm going to show you my equity curve towards the end and you'll see how, how positive that is. Uh, once again, high probability success. Uh, I've been doing publicly releasing my alerts for the last uh, 11 plus years with, uh, and over that whole time, I've had about 74% winning trades. It's a very high probability of success. Of course, we are sellers of premium. So, so the longer you stay with the trade, that the theta decays and so does the premium because we're trading out of the money options. So as, as, as you stay in the trade, that premium decays uh, because of time. So time is on our side, but we always buy one further out of the money to protect us against catastrophic losses. Beauty of credit spreads is you don't have to watch it all the time. Uh, they don't move that quickly because it's a very conservative trade. And because it's a conservative trade, it's very low anxiety. Low anxiety allows you to check your ego at the door and, and just, uh, you know, 
think about what you're doing and just execute and uh, get out when you're supposed to get out. The nice thing about credit spreads is uh, three out of four ways you're a winner. In this particular example, I'm showing you the, the chart of RUT and uh, RUT came down, came back up, made a, high, uh, a lower high, excuse me, a lower high than a lower low right here. And that was the point where we wanted to do a bear call. And this is the bear call that we did where we sold this one and bought this option further out of the money. Now, if the price goes down, you're a winner. If the price goes sideways, you're a winner. If it goes up just a little bit, you're a winner. The only time you're going to lose is when it goes up quickly and gets into this no man's land between your options where you sold and bought it's the only the only time you're going to be in trouble and and i foresee that and i will get out before something like that happens i don't adjust i always either i'm in or i'm out so credit spreads are an awesome an awesome thing to do so what i want to do on this in this video is show you exactly how i execute a trade And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over these rules, then I'm going to go over to Thinkorswim, and I'm actually going to show you setting up a live trade. First thing I'm looking for is the proper option chain. Once I decide that I want to do a bull put or a bear call, I want to determine the what, what option chain I want to do. When, when do I want it to expire? If I'm looking at weekly options, I only need about 10 days to give me the kind of credit that I'm looking for um, to, to, to profit nicely with the leaps. And I'm looking, when I talk about leaps, I'm talking about something approximately 100 days from expiration. Um, these two will help me to, to decide what option chain to use to give me enough credit to make this worthwhile. The next thing I want to do is I want to choose the strike price of the option to sell. Now for a bull put, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the projected move based on the implied volatility from the current price or, or just use a delta of 0.2. And I will show you that when we, when we look at a live trade. For bear call, it's just the opposite. I'm going to add the projected move based on the implied volatility of the current price, or just use a delta of 0.2. Once I've got the strike price I'm going to sell, then I want to choose the strike price to buy. For the weeklies, I'm using a five-point spread. For everything else, I'm using a 10-point spread. I want to check the open interest to make sure that the, that the, the option I'm trading here and the vertical spread that I'm setting up has enough liquidity that I can get in and out. Now, I say I'm looking for about 100, but, but sometimes I'll deviate if one side is, is uh, higher than 100 and the other side slightly less, I'll, I'll bend that rule and, and go with it. Then the last thing to do is just uh, right click on the option to sell, click on the sell, click on, on the vertical on your uh, trading platform, uh, check the quantity, uh, check the midpoint and, and send it on its way. Okay. So let's go over to, um, let's go over to my thinkorswim right now. And um, let's see, I don't want to end this show. Yeah, yeah, let me go ahead and do that. And let's go over to Think or Swim. And what we're looking at is uh, Medtronics. Medtronics is currently trading at about uh, 90.9. Um, when, when a stock is somewhere around $100 to about $500, um, I'm trying to set up a, uh, a vertical about 100 days from expiration to give me about a dollar, dollar fifty worth of credit. That makes it worthwhile, okay? So if we look at Medtronics, you can see that it has made a measured move. A measured move is, remember, it, it, it went from the low to a high to a low 
and a higher low and then a higher high. And this is a measured move. So once I see that, I want to execute a bull put on think or swim and, and, and I, I, I happen to think think or swim is an excellent platform. I'm not associated with them. Uh, if you've got another platform that it's fine, uh, you should be able to learn from what I'm doing here and modify it based on your trading platform. But I want to go up to the trade tab, click on the trade tab. And I want to, let me show you what the option chains look like. These are the different options that are available. And this is the time to expiration. I'm looking for, with Medtronics, about $90. I'm looking for about 100 days of expiration. And that would be the 18 November. So I just opened up the 18 November. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is choose the strike price to sell. So this is a bull put. So I want to look at uh, the current price, which is 90. And I want to subtract um, the, the probable move based on the implied volatility for this length of time for Medtronics. And that shows me that's about 11 points. So I want to subtract 11 from, from 90, and that's going to give me 79 or about 80. And that's going to be the strike that I want to sell. Now, you'll notice over here on the delta, that gives you about 0.2. So that's the easy thing to do. Just look for a delta of about 0.2. In layman's term, what that's telling you is this option is going to expire 80% of the time. It's going to expire worthless. And that's what we want. We're sellers. Okay? So 80 is the strike price that I'm going to sell. Now, I want to choose the strike price to buy, and because this is what I call a leap, I'm going to move about 10 points. So I'm going to sell the 80, and I'm going to buy the 70. Just checking on the open interest. Well, this has got plenty of open interest on the sell side. Eh, it's a little sly, uh, sly or <laughs> little shy on the on the buy side, but I'm okay with this option. It's, it's pretty liquid, this vertical spread. So I'm just going to click on sell. And I want to sell a vertical. And it brings up my little template here. Okay. So what this is saying is that I'm selling the 18 November 80 strike price put. Then I'm going to buy the 70 strike price put for about a dollar 15 and that's good that gives me a nice credit now i want to adjust the quantity that i'm looking for and once i have that quantity set i want to make sure it's at the midpoint your if your trading platform doesn't allow you to do the midpoint you don't want to put it in at the market because you can see that there's quite a difference between at the market and the midpoint you're telling the floor traders, I don't want to get it at the natural price. I want to get it at the midpoint between the bid and the ask. Okay. Sometimes it might sit there for a while for the floor traders to pick that up. But, but this is going to save you a lot if you always go between the bid and the ask price for your vertical spread. It's going to save you money. Once you have that, you just click on confirm and send. You read this over, make sure you read this over. I'm going to sell the quantity vertical Medtronics 18 November 22, selling the 80, buying the 70 put, dollar 14. That's exactly what I want to do. Okay, so I want to go ahead and send that. All right, and you, you can see it was already filled. It was filled at $1.14. Okay, so that's it. That's how I execute the trade on Thinkorswim. So let me go back to, uh, let me see if I can get that back um, to 
to where we were on the slideshow. Sure, there we go. So I want to choose the proper option chain. And here we were looking at Medtronics. It's about 100 days to expiration to give me about between a dollar and a dollar fifty credit. Then I want to choose the strike price, making it easy using a delta of 0.2, and that was the 80. Then I want to go 10 points apart. That's the 70. I want to sell the 80, buy the 70. Check my open interest. Yeah, it was it was okay. It was okay. Then I just want to right click on the option to sell and click on vertical and the little little template comes up. You click and make sure you're on the mid midpoint. You confirm and send and there you go. Okay. That's how you go step by step to execute a credit spread trade at the midpoint and that's what you want. Now, I've been doing this for greater than 40 years. And um, selling vertical spreads, bull puts, bear calls, is the absolute best way to make money in the stock market. It's conservative. This uh, over here was uh, a lot of things were going on when, when the market was kind of volatile. You had uh, Russia invading Ukraine. We had uh, the latest strain of coronavirus. You had inflation where the uh, FOMC was increasing interest rates. And uh, it was a, this is a tough period, but you can see you just stick with this. And uh, yeah, we've got, we've got some losing streaks. And then, you know, we just continue right on. This is, this is the kind of equity curve you want. And like I said, I've been doing this for publicly for 11 plus years with about 74% win rate. And when I have a winner, I win more than a loser. So this is a positive expectation trading strategy. I would like to teach you all this. I would like to show you how I do this. There's a couple things that I do. If you join me as a mentor, as I'm the mentor, <laughs> you're the mentee. Uh, just go to www.optionsinfinity.com, sign up. Uh, you get the entire master suite that shows you how I trade Forex, it shows you how I trade stocks. Um, and, 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 and for credit spreads, you're, when I see a trade, I'm, I'm not a registered investment advisor. It's, um, I have to tell you what I'm doing and then it's up to you as to whether you wanna do it but I send out a text and email alert when I see that I'm doing something. And I'm the one of the only ones in the business, I think I'm the only one in the business that shows my position list, how I've done. And you can actually look at you know the last five, 10 years of how I'll, the records are right there for you as a member to, to, to review. And then uh, once every other week, we get together for uh, a members meetup uh, it's about an hour long. I record this. Uh, I, I usually teach uh, teach something, and then uh, we go over all the current trades. Plenty of time for the mentees to ask questions and make sure they're fully on board with this very powerful strategy. I hope you all consider joining me. Bye-bye now.